that's me done with it. <laughs> because, you know, and, and so I went back to the tool I developed, which I get results with. And so I'm just sticking to that. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So that, that is uh, your your tool? You've created your tool, that tool? Yeah, so I, I developed a tool about um, about 11 years ago now when I was when I found out I was pregnant and I had tocophobia, which is extreme birth, it's extreme fear of birth and child and pregnancy, which is not a lot of people know that it exists. I didn't know I had it when I had it. <laughs> I just knew that I, that I found out I was pregnant. It wasn't planned. And I was like, fuck, 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 fuck. And had a bit of a break, not a breakdown, but I felt really shit very, very immediately. And then I lost the baby like three weeks later. And then I felt huge relief. And I was like, what the fuck, Lex? What is that? How can you feel relief at a miscarriage? Since when do you, do women feel relief? at What's that about? And I thought I was just a mess. So I just did a lot of inner work thinking I was, I just lost my mum not long ago. So I thought I had depression, anxiety, <laughs> all of that. I was in a really bad place. And I just thought it was as a result of being in a bad place. So I just worked, did loads of inner work for a year and then I got pregnant again a year later. And I was still terrified of being pregnant, but I wasn't, didn't feel really shit like I did the other time. But I was like, there's no way that I can have this baby while being conscious. I've got to be knocked out. I need all the drugs. There's no way that I can be present during the arrival of this thing. Uh, no way. And um, and then I decided now I started training in a technique and that was a practitioner therapeutic technique and I thought well, I need to try and figure out a way of making this so I can use it on me because I was one of the first people to learn it because I thought I've got so much shit that I cannot afford a therapist there's no way I can afford it. and then anyway no one else exists with only five of us that do this and and apparently I'm the better one in the group so I I'm stuck here so I played around with it and made it DIY and I ended up clearing what is called tocophobia in two months on my own in my second trimester and then changed to change my home birth from c-section with all the drugs to a home birth in month seven and then had an amazing pain-free home birth <laughs> and it's like fuck was that me did it work was it a fluke you know and I didn't really know so I parked it carried on being a business coach using this technique in my work with business owners and stuff but it is baby number two came along like four years later and I was like oh did it work did that stuff work are my fears still gone did it stick did it you know it was a way for me to test whether or not anything I'd done four years before was actually had any worth would worked or whatever so yeah my fears had still gone I had new ones because it was different and yeah and my fear of injections which I had I used to collapse at the sight of a needle that was still gone you know like I was like wow this is this has worked and then after I was pregnant when I was breastfeeding the second one, I got loads of emails from women. I have no idea how they found out. <laughs> Emailing me going, how the fuck did you do that? Like have a fearless birth, get from fearful to fearless twice. And I was like, well, explaining them on email, my technique and how you unpack fears and da, 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 da. And they're like, really long emails. And I was like, I'm breastfeeding. I'm not time for this shit. If I get another email, I'm going to write a book. <clears throat> and I got neither, and then another email. I was like, shit. And then, so I wrote a book and in two months I wrote 108,000 words. And I was like, fuck, you're a business coach with men, like male business leaders, alpha males. And you've just written a book on pregnancy and birth. Like, what the fuck? This is the book. <laughs> so yeah, quite a meaty book, right? Um, and then I was like, what the hell am I going to do with this? Obviously publishing takes a while and editing and all that nonsense. So I was like, I'll just launch a podcast and just share stuff, you know, and then I'll go back to do my business coaching and, and whatever. And then so I launched my Fear Free Childbirth podcast and it went nuts. Like I had a head trash show podcast already that was doing really well. It was the top of the charts on iTunes and all of that. So I, I thought I knew what um, a successful podcast looked like. And then that one launched and it just eclipsed it. It just went insane in terms of volume and downloads and everything. And I was like, shit, this is like, there's a lot of women that are scared of birth. Like I thought it was just me. And then the more I got into it, I thought, right, I'm going to park my head trash work and I'm going to get into this birth stuff. So I pivoted at that point. And then I went, but women who are pregnant do not have the same budget as businessmen for coaching. <laughs> what a surprise. Yeah. So, yeah, I did a lot of digital programs, online stuff to make it super affordable, super easy. And also I productized my methods so you can buy audio tracks to clear fear, individual fears and, mm. and all of that just to make it super affordable and accessible because a lot of them just can't afford to pay for private coaching when they're pregnant. And also they don't value it. They're more going to, they're more likely to buy the pram or the baby seat than pay for emotional well-being. You know, that's just the state of the world. 
Um, so yeah, so I spent, and I ended up thinking I was going to work mainly with pregnant women who were terrified. And actually, I'd say 80% of my clients in that time were women who wanted to be mothers, who couldn't even make the decision to start trying with their husband or partner. So they, some of them couldn't have sex because they were too terrified of pregnancy. Um, some of them couldn't even make the decision whether or not to have babies. They weren't sure whether they wanted to be a mother. They were just, the fear was so all-encompassing that they couldn't even talk about it with their other half. Some of them have had multiple abortions of babies they want. There's a lady I'm working with at the moment. She's on her third abortion and she desperately wants to be a mother, but she can't stomach being pregnant. It makes her want to kill herself. You know, I didn't have it like that at all, but that's tocophobia. So, um, so I've worked a lot with women with that, which meant that I ended up working with a lot of anxiety, depression, OCD, like really shitty mental health conditions and putting my techniques through the, to the test. Cause the whole time I've only used my method on things like OCD, depression, anxiety, tocophobia. So I was able to really test it properly in that area. And then when COVID hit, just in fact, when I was working with Tam, I decided to kind of like pivot away from pregnancy. So I was getting a bit bored of all that and go back to my business coaching rooms because I was getting some women saying, oh, does that all that fear stuff work on business stuff? And I was like, yeah, because I've been using it. So that's when I pivoted. And I think when I was in Sam's group, I landed a client and I think I did a 15K sale when I was in the group. So yeah, I got a 15K sale, but it wasn't, I used all my stuff to help me land that sale, not Shadow Alchemy. Um, having her there to say demand 15K was helpful but um it wasn't shadow alchemy that landed me that sale in that sense it was working with my own tool um so yeah now i do i've kind of gone away from that now but do more in like um widening the scope of the tool because i felt it was limiting it's clearly a bloody good technique right so to keep it within pregnancy and birth felt really limiting and i needed the rest of the world to kind of benefit you know not just people that women in that space that's quite a limited part of the population and the fact that I was getting amazing results the lady with the, the CEO that landed that, that signed up for that she I started working her in the January and at that point her budget for year end was 250k by the June she was projected to do 750k at the end of that year based on the work that we did yeah and that's why she signed up again for set for 15k because it's like this is a no-brainer because she was getting such big results with her business. She already had an, an evidence before. Exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. So in my head, I'm like, also for my own revenue, I'm like, why the hell am I pissing about with these pregnant women who can't afford it? <laughs> like, I need to step back from that and head over to where the where the money is, where I can really start building my business and start doing it. Anyway, sorry, I detracted, but yeah. No, yes, no, no, so. no, 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 absolutely. I, I, I was actually uh, listening to you and I had no idea as well about that women were so afraid of getting pregnant and all those yeah. things that you have talked about. I know. It's, it's really the statistics are pretty shocking, actually. I mean, I've since become a talk, an expert on tocophobia because nobody can get the results that I can get. So if you if you're um, I've got lots of women that come to me because they've you know, there's a doctor that worked with me in the UK. So she's kind of researched all the, the evidence and research there is around tocophobia, how to work, you know, what where's the support, what support is available. And she couldn't find anything. And basically, if you have tocophobia in the UK, they'll just say, well, just suck it up, get a C-section, maybe have some counselling. But essentially, there's nothing you can do. You've just got to try a bit of CBT, but that, that rarely works on anybody, really. Um, and so, yeah, just suck it up. And I typically, unless the woman's got depression and anxiety and OCD, you know, some of those things, if it's just tocophobia, I can turn it around in three weeks, four weeks. So when she's pregnant and she's like that, I can turn it, you know, I can get rid of it for her in the time of her pregnancy. Um, no one else can do that as far as I'm aware. Um, and I get clients from all over the world, Thailand, Japan, Australia, because they can't find anybody, the one that understands what they're going through because therapists haven't got a clue so they don't understand the psychology of it in the way that I do. And then the tools they've got don't work. So when you've got somebody that doesn't understand it and a tool that doesn't work or techniques that don't work, you don't get results. Whereas I get results really fast. So, um, yeah, so I, some people say, oh, you know, I really wanted to talk to you because you're an expert on this. I'm like, am I? I suppose I am because I've been working it for so long and loads of women and everything. But um yeah, so it's kind of, but 35% of women suffer from tocophobia 
it's not I, insane. It's insane. I've never ever heard about that name, yeah. that concept before. And I'm kind of appalled about everything that you are saying. But what what it's coming from now for me is you you have found your gift. Yeah. Well, maybe. Yeah. Well, my own life situation. With your own life situation, yeah. you, have, you, have, you have created the resource and, and the methods that can help other women uh, yeah. navigate through that through that fear and, yeah, yeah. and have a baby. And actually anybody. And the, the big thing about, because of the pregnancy world being, or the women there having no money, I made everything really, you know, I've made the technique DIY. So the DIY version where you don't need to hire me. You just, it's, it's all in the book, right? It's all in the book. So you just, you know, read the book and crack on. Um, then I've got audio tracks. If you've got, you know, the, for the common fears, if you just want to listen to me, say the things to you so it's all very like accessible and doable on an individual level you don't have to understand loads of stuff to do it um and it's really it's a really simple method there are 10 mantras that i that blanks in and i you just put in the blanks the thing that you want to clear so you just kind of have to as long as you can read you can do the technique there's no kind of like with shadow alchemy i was like well am i hitting the tone of truth am i like have i done it yet you know there was you don't bloody know if you're getting it. Like you, you spend hours doing it, screaming at the top of your lungs, whether or not you've hit the toe. You don't know whether you've done it kind of thing. Whereas there's nothing, none of that with my tool. It's just really simple. And um, so, yeah, it's DIY. Obviously, there's a therapist or a coach version if you want to train and use it with clients. And there's much more to it. But I've kept elements of it super simple so that people could do it themselves. And I created a membership and there was a lady that joined who you clearly couldn't afford to work with me and everything. And it's dead cheap. It's like $29 a month, right? So ridiculously cheap. And it's just all in there. Loads of scripts, mantras and stuff for people to use. And, um, and so she said, that I've got depression and tocophobia. And I was thinking, okay, well, it's all in there. Like, there's no reason why she shouldn't be able to kind of deal with all of that. Anyway, two months later, she emails me to cancel. And I'm like, oh, shit, really must do better with my membership site. <laughs> So I was like, oh, okay, what have you got? How'd it go? What's going on? She went, amazing. I'm totally free of my depression and my cockophobia. I've just been working like a demon. I've been doing one clearance a day. It's amazing. When I joined, I couldn't get out of bed. I was in bed all day. I couldn't leave the house. Da, 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 da. Now we're about to start trying. I'm amazing. I've got loads of energy. And I was like, fuck me. She spent two months in my membership. So I got spent 60 bucks. And she got rid of a depression and tocophobia on her own, just with a couple of videos and stuff that I shared with her. And that's that's what really fires me up, the fact that anybody, if they just want to do the work, they can just sort their mental health out, be happy, whatever it is they want. Right? They can just do that on their own. They don't need a therapist. They don't need a coach. They don't need anybody. They just need to make a commit work. And if they if they want to commit and do the work, then there are the tools I can just give it to you. If you don't, fine. Go, some, you know, whinge. <laughs> whinge about your life or whatever it is but there, there if you want it it's there and I've made it really affordable for people and that's I think right now when everyone's suffering with the prices of everything going crazy with also the mental health crisis that's just going a lot worse with everything <laughs> it's kind of I feel like it's all the ones needs right now so yeah now I've, we bought a house in April because I was like massive transition for the last three years moving living out of suitcases not knowing where we lived if we we're gonna have a home and blah 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 so now I've arrived here, we've been here like what, five, six months. Now I'm like, okay, okay, now what am I doing again? What's my business? What's the plan? What am I, you know, so I'm getting things up and running slowly again, because it's just been, everything was on pause while we were moving so much. And I didn't have an office and internet and kids at homeschooling for six months of the year. And, you know, it's a bit chaotic. I couldn't even think about my business at that point because it was just didn't know if I was going to have a home to live in kind of thing. So, but yeah, sorry, I'm witching on again. No, 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 that's up. I'm, I'm listening. <laughs> this is supposed to be whatever it is supposed to be. I, no rules. There is no, no rules. rules. Yeah, no rules. It's just like whoever. Sometimes I'm the one who's talking. Sometimes it's the guest who's talking. So yeah, 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 yeah. And, I, yeah. and I'm and I'm kind of enjoying what you are saying because it's something new that I've never heard before. And um, there was something that was coming that was related to like what what is that? What is exactly that brings 
uh, results to some people that that work with you and others don't it's their well, willing their willingness to first to do the work otherwise yeah so i've got one lady at the moment she signed up and she's not doing the work and she said oh well i didn't realize that i had to do this stuff and it was like she because i thought i was just we were going to talk about me you know and how i feel about kids i was like well that's counseling and that doesn't work and why would you have paid what you've paid me when you just want counseling this works but you have to do the work you have to put the effort in it's like hiring a personal trainer because you want to lose weight you know you can hire the personal trainer and you can turn up with your at your pt session for 30 minutes a week but if you don't do anything else other than turn up to your pt session then you're not really going to get the results what you need to be doing is going to the gym every day repeating all the exercises that they're giving you and reinforce the work that the pt is doing because they, they're checking in on you you know that's basically how i work i was like i show you what you need to do i'm there on slack or wherever messaging if you need me at any time but you have to be the one that does the work the clearance the process because it's a process that you have to yes i can do it for you if you want to pay and go to the next level and i'll be your therapeutic coach and do that but obviously that's next level budget that's next level whatever which yeah you can do that but the, the honest truth is is when somebody's got something like anxiety or tocophobia there's a lot of like typically for anxiety or tocophobia there's like 30 or 40 clearances you need to do and one clearance can take anything from 10 minutes to 40 minutes so I say that you need to put in at least five hours a week during the time we're working together on that tocophobia program, at least, which is like a four or five week program. But then in that time, you put the effort in and at the end of it, maybe three weeks, it'll be done. Maybe four weeks, you'll be done. Maybe five weeks, you'll be near the end and you'll need to carry in a bit on your own. But that's the time. That's how the effort you need to do to get the result you want. And those that do get the results like that's it you know if it's like if there's 10 tasks you need to do to get your come to-do list complete and to achieve the thing and you don't do any of them you're not going to achieve the thing it's not going to happen on its own right so that's the difference between those that get the results and those that don't and the other place where people don't get the results is where they've got something that's really it's like a like the cover of my book the one that's not the birth one, the main head trash book it's like a tangle of knotty mess right and that's what head trash is like it's just like a mess and it's you can pull strands out and like when you've got knotty hair you can just pull bits out and if you pull enough out you'll the knot will just collapse right but sometimes it just gets tangled in a way and you're like why won't this come out what is going on here and it requires a little bit of problem solving and a little bit of well, where that where's that piece going what's what is that why is that stuck like that and sometimes we do hit something where it's like this doesn't make sense there's something else there's a really deep wound here that we're having problem identifying because some stuff is so deep that it's not immediately obvious yeah. what's going on there's a lady i'm working with at the moment who's horse riding right she read my book and she's like oh my god i've tried everything i've hired all the people to try and sort out my my, my horse riding fear but when i read about your technique and the fact that because it's based on opposites so it's about loving and hating various aspects of the thing and she goes i was really drawn to your technique because there's nothing more than i love than taking my horse out and horse jumping and jumping over country fences like i love it but there's nothing i fear more in the world than taking my horse out horse jumping and jumping over country fences and i was like what this is crazy she goes and I've been riding my horse for 35 years and I enter into competitions to do show jumping competitions all the time and she's 61 right and she's you can imagine like horse riding that's a bit of an investment you know she's been investing and doing all this for pretty much her whole life and she's terrified of it every time she submits the form in to do a horse show like a jumping competition she just feels sick the 24 hours before she has to go she's got diarrhea she's really ill she can't eat her breakfast she's in an absolute mess and so this is this has been with her for 35 years or whatever um no one has been able to help her with it and we did a few sessions and we managed to move the needle she's like oh my god i've never managed to get results like this let's carry on because we hadn't finished but clearly we needed to make more progress and the more we're going with it, the more, more we're realizing it's really deep. There's a lot of very interconnected emotional childhood traumas that are kind of at the root. Her father wound is playing into it, which a wound around loss wound that when she lost somebody else as a child that was related. So there's loads of the survivor's guilt in there. There's 
loads of things that are playing out but if we hadn't cleared the surface stuff we wouldn't yeah. get to that point um and so when you i just keep digging 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 you know it's everyone's different so um sometimes things collapse really easily and other times it requires a bit more digging you know but um but but, really the, fact, but the fact that that she was able to jump on her horse during all this all her life even feeling that way is it's quite uh amazing because most people don't do that no i know you would have stopped right you they would have... have stopped they wouldn't do it <laughs> i know i'm just like she, she's not crazy but it's like it's insane that you know you can put yourself through that um for something but that she loves it so much when she's on it when she's on the horse and jumping she enjoys it but everything leading up to it is a total nightmare for her um yeah but so we're making really good progress and she's feeling like she's felt calmer than she's ever felt around her horse and in the days before and all of that but we haven't completely nailed it so um yeah we're still working on it but yeah so that's another times when it doesn't work where you're like well we're just still looking for a thing that is going to collapse this you know what i in my personal experience and what I've been doing the last four months of my life is that that feeling of uh, the, the uncomfortable, the uns that that I feel when I'm when I'm about to do something that I've never done before, like into the into the unknown. It's 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 going to be all, always there that feeling. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Yesterday, for example, I did a live stream on my Facebook profile and I, I, I wanted to vomit in the beginning. I felt <laughs> like, oh my God, I want to vomit. I don't want to be here. But I know I wanted to be there. I wanted to do that live stream because I know the more I do it, the more it becomes natural for me to doing it. Yeah. Because, because I was showing up myself, I was exposing myself. And in the middle of the live stream, I, I had a huge blank oh <laughs> i was just like oh my god this is happening i'm actually <laughs> living the what i was fearing the most that was completely forgot what i was talking about and i had that moment of silence that i don't know what i'm going to say next yeah but i stood there yeah i stood, I stood there in the middle of that sensation that was fucking uncomfortable and i continue the live stream yeah 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 because i was expecting to be perfect i was expecting to i had imagined before jumping in jumping live that i would be saying this and that da, 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 da. but that does not happen that way yeah no and it's been able to and also like having permission to just to be able to pause there's so many people i watch now where they're not polished they're not perfect they things go wrong and they just take it in their stride rather than going oh I, oh i'm really sorry this isn't working and, and being all awkward about it whereas if you just like look tech fails you know like it's not my fault i'm not i'm not stupid because suddenly this facebook live stream button's not working whatever you know like a lot of people have got this these wounds that mean that when it doesn't work out right oh my god i look stupid and because they being smart is really important to them. It's one of their values or their dad always told them about being smart. And so now they look stupid. It's bringing loads of old stuff up. And so they kind of melt on camera a little bit because they're getting, there's all this stuff that's showing up for them. Um, whereas if you can, but actually, and even Lorna would have been, you know, just seeing Lorna, she, she'll sit there forever and faffing and, oh, and she checks her phone and you just like, as a viewer, you're like, come on, like I've put my time to watch you. Like what are you faffing about here, you know? But she just doesn't care, you know, and, and and actually I've seen other people that just come on and they don't have a, they don't prepare and then they just, oh, I'm just going to talk about this today. And and actually that authenticity is really compelling to kind of watch rather than these polished things of someone's got bullet points or they, they don't break down, they not break down, but they don't kind of stumble or, and it's nice to watch somebody just being real rather than not real the realness is really appealing and there's a connection there that you lose when it's you know so actually the imperfections of forgetting exactly exactly and i'm 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 so much into being raw and vulnerable yeah. and showing up myself and exposing up myself uh, in my vulnerability and yeah there i and there it was that was being myself there, yeah. there, yeah. there was a 
that was, that was me showing up and being myself vulnerable, showing how imperfect it is and how yeah. perfect and how perfect it is at the same time. Exactly. Showing exactly what was happening with me. Yeah. Moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's that people love that. People love that. And I think when we realize that, then you just then you can do a live stream and you just don't care that you just like, well, whatever. It doesn't matter. And if people aren't interested, they can switch off, right? I okay. wanted I wanted to end that live stream. I wanted to delete the live stream, but I know that that is not the point. The point yeah. is to leave the live stream because that is part of the creation. Yeah, that, that was the, that was the step that was required for me to move the the, the next one. So yeah. why why am I going to delete that? It does yeah. not make any sense. It's like painting uh, 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 a board. And then just showing off the board because the, the rest of the boards, uh, the painting is not perfect. Yeah. yeah Ridiculous. Yeah. No, no, no. Totally, totally. Yeah. So that that is where that is where I'm at in, in my my personal self-development journey. Like you want to show yourself raw? Yeah. So, but I was I was I wanted to show a perfect, the perfect raw. <laughs> yeah it does not make any sense like i want to show myself raw but in a perfect way <laughs> oh the irony yeah oh, the, yeah the irony i was just like oh my god this is so funny. no 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 yeah 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 so what's been one of the biggest challenges that you've had in terms of like on your personal development journey there have been some real like last last year two years ago it was really hard it was yeah. the moment when i I kept investing my money in on in all of those uh, courses and programs and work with all those mentors because I really really wanted to build my business and create a, a foundation for myself mm. because I had none so mm. that was fucking important for me and I was seeing that I was just investing money and I was not creating money back like uh, enough money back to pay my bills and meet my ends yeah and i was seeing that evolution and i was not seeing the results that i that i that i desired and all those coaches were promising like this and that and that and i was believing in those promises okay mm -hmm. so it was a matter of choice i'm not blaming them because i i've chosen that i've mm. chosen that in the past and then i i i uh, got to this point like exactly two years ago two mm. years ago I remember waking up one day like the 12th October 12th or something waking up and I just like collapsed in that morning I collapsed and I couldn't get out of that collapse that that hole that shit hole for the next nine months oh really I was having panic attacks every day anxiety I had I stopped eating because I couldn't swallow the food. Oh, the food, the food just won't, wouldn't go 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 down. So yeah, I lost a lot of weight. I start I became really what's the opposite of, of strength? Weak. Oh yeah, yeah, weak. Yeah, yeah, weak. Yeah. I became really weak. I yeah, couldn't, I couldn't get out of the bed, and I was just like, "This is the end. I am going to die." Oh gosh. This is the end. I have I have no strength. I cannot get up from my bed. Just going to the supermarket for me was just a huge task. And I had my son back then. And I was just like, fuck. I cannot do. I can, I'm not functioning. I cannot function. Yeah. I had to help, ask him for help to... To, to cook my meals because I could just couldn't. Yeah. I couldn't. And I was just like, I'm in this deep shit hole and I having I'm having so much difficulties to to break through and come out of it. Yeah. So then one day I was here sitting on my sofa and I start having some suicidal thoughts. I, I thought I'm going to suicide myself. I'm going to kill myself. I'm yeah. going to jump from the six from my sixth floor and I'm going to kill myself because there's no point in being in this reality. 
Mm -hmm. I'm afraid of failure. Everything that I'm doing, it's not working. So I have no money. I have nowhere to go. I have no job. So I'm going to kill myself. And in that moment, I was, I was just like, this, this is not me. This is not me. This is, this is not real. These thoughts aren't mine. And that was my moment of, um, that I asked for help, where I asked for help. I called to a friend and I said, listen, this is, I'm, this is happening right now with me. I'm having these thoughts and I'm, I want to kill myself. Something is going on and I don't know how to come over. So these friends, then I start, start working with a, with a therapist that she helped me um, first go deep and, and really see what, what was really going on underneath all that was happening. Yes. There was this uh, old strategy like a, from my childhood that I was desperately holding on so tightly because I didn't want to let go. But mm. at the same time, I wanted to know what was it. I just wanted to know what was it in order for it to let go. And I didn't need it to know what was it. But back then I was in that loop. I need to mm -hmm. know what I need to know what, what what I need to let go in order to move forward. And I was in that continuous loop every day, every day, every day, and I couldn't just get out of it. So this this uh, therapist that is a friend of mine, she helped me see first what was happening, recognize what was triggering that loop. And the moment that I would be at home doing my, my tasks or whatever, the moment that I, that, I, that I realized that the trigger was on, to immediately do the opposite, do something different to, yeah. change, to change the loop. And yeah. I start, and I'd start getting, doing that one, one, one time, two times, three times, and still the loop was not, looking yeah. anymore and I yeah, could yeah. and I could start you know breathing again start swallowing food starting in, because I, I wasn't I wasn't receiving the nutrition nutrients yeah yeah so I was really weak I I, I couldn't barely walk yeah, 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 yeah. so it was, for me it was it was quite a challenge and then I got back to the airports Miracle, miraculously, uh, I've got a got a, uh, a proposal to go back and do a promotion, and I immediately said yes because first I had no money, and I need I knew I needed to start moving my body again. Yes, I had to start going outside and speak with people, engage with people, yeah. to start feeling more alive within myself. Yeah. And then I spent the last year like, okay, so I failed in my business. It didn't work out. So I'm not suited to be a coach. I'm going to be something else. Perhaps I'm going to be an hairdresser. I'm going to choose a different, a different job, a different direction for my life and blah, 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 blah. But that was a lie. I was just convincing myself because I had... <laughs> The, the the results that I had that I had in the past that were supposedly uh, that I was thinking they they were uh, a, a failure they were not they were just part of the creation it's part of when you are building yeah. your business and yeah. when you do, when you don't have any results you don't stop your business you don't stop creating you continue what yeah. you are here to do. But yeah. for me, for me I, I took it as a failure. I took it like this is not yeah. for me because I was expecting it to, to work immediately. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I had this expectation. <laughs> so like four months ago in July, I went to this festival and I've said this many times on social media, even on yesterday's live stream. I went to this festival and I went along and I was... I had this opportunity to to remove myself from social media, from what I was reading, from the scrolling on on the yeah. on on the on social media. 
And then I start realizing the bullshit stories that I was buying into that yeah. I that I have convinced myself about my business, about my life, about anything. And I was just like, fuck, I am creating this. I am creating all the time. So this is what I'm creating now. And what what the past, the last year, I have created that too. Hmm. I think this is an interesting, interesting. So what do I want to create? Yeah. What do I really want to create from now? So I want to go back to my business. Because I had this pattern like uh, back and forth, back and forth, yeah, yeah, yeah. back yeah. and forth. I would go, if I had results, then I would go, I, I would, I, I would go all into to my business. If I didn't have any results, I would go back. I would withdraw. Yeah, I would, yeah, yeah. I would st start thinking about what, what did I did wrong and blah, blah, blah. So I had, I made this decision to go all in and stay there. Stay cool. there. Stay there. Even if no one buys from you, even no one buys from me, even if no one, whatever, I'm yeah. not, I'm not going to quit. I'm not, yeah. going, I'm not going to abandon myself again and abandon what I'm creating just because someone does not buy my shit. This is so ridiculous. Just thinking about this. Yeah. It's funny you mentioned the word abandon because I'm doing some um, like early this year, I hit a real shit point and I realized I needed to go deeper with my healing. And I realized that the next level for me was traumas, like old traumas, old wounds and all of that. And I hadn't really gone there properly. And I again, I'm on my own and, you know, in the middle of France waiting for our house sales complete and, you know, not really being able to work. So we've been moving and all of that. So I was like, I need to do this myself. So I decided to come up with a, a trauma clearance that I could use on myself. Hmm. So I spent like January and February developing it, testing it, developing it, testing it and all that. And, and I cleared a load of my shit, um, old traumas and stuff that was just like, yeah, and I made so much progress getting rid of stuff that was really weighing me down. And then I was like, oh, I really need to like, does this work on other people? Is it just me? Like, I need to test this. But you can't just go, hey, do you want to clear a trauma? <laughs> Not really, <laughs> like, you know. But then, like, you know, little conversations of people go, and they're like, oh, yeah, I've got this trauma that, blah, 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 you know. I was like, oh, well, I could clear it. We could try clearing it if you want. Oh, yes, please. So so I ended up testing it a bit with people in, like, about April or something. And then I was like, oh, I really need to see if I can do, like, can, I, can it work on lots of people at once? Like, you know, what about healing lots of people? Because of my mission, not my mission, that sounds so cheesy, but I kind of feel like I have a, my calling. I, again, cheesy words, but like I need to heal I got lots it. of people at once, you know, like a mass healing. I feel like the world is in such shit that there aren't enough good therapists or people that can work on this level to heal everybody. And that's why I want to make it DIY so people can look themselves. And also if they just want to rock up on the Zoom and heal their shit, they can, right? So I ran a few tests in the summer with some group healings and that seemed to go really, really well. So last week I've started doing these weekly free trauma healing sessions on Zoom, um, not on Zoom, on something else. But yeah. Um, and this week I was just writing the copy before we got on because this week's theme is about abandonment. And one of the ways that the abandonment room shows up is we abandon ourselves. And that's exactly what you were just talking about and how we abandon ourselves early on in the project. So a lot of things we start, we don't finish because we abandon them. And I was like, oh, my God, this is like. Um, so, yeah, I'm going through all the inner child wounds, like betrayal, rejection, abandonment, like all the, you know, all the ones. So I'm just sharing that with you. because if you want, then you might want to rock up to that one this week and act like heal that wound within you if it's still alive the, self, the self abandoning is just like it's it's not the reason why we stop doing things it's much much deeper and complex. so much deeper and, uh, and you know what's really deep and what's what i don't think enough is talked about is how much of that trauma some of it yes it's from our current life and whatever we experience as kids right or when we were born but a lot of it is in utero and i know from my lot my work with pregnant women how much of the in utero experience and and all the work that I've done and the in, the people I've interviewed on the podcast where you know prenatal psychology as a field of work so that's you know the psychology of babies before they're born so the, the babies are feeling conscious beings 
um, way before they come out of the womb. Um, so there's a whole in utero experience when you're sharing a body with your mother. So what she feels, you feel. So there's a lot of patterns that get embedded in utero. So you're like thinking, well, why have I got this shit going on? What's going on? And it's like, this isn't even my shit. This was her shit. And I'm playing it out in my life, right? I see that a lot. I had it a lot until I hit upon it and realized it and was able to heal it. But then what I've discovered through the work I've done this year is how much shit we're playing out today from our past lives and our ancestral lives. And now when I do a reading, or not a reading, a um, clearance on myself or with clients, I tune in to find out how many events are under that theme for them. So um, um, so with the theme of like, um, and I've got one here, here. Like, so for example, with the theme of asking, which doesn't sound like a traumatic theme particularly, but especially when it comes to women and money, they don't, know how to ask for money like asking for the sale asking you know going on the live stream and saying oh got a program blah, 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 whatever one of the four main money wounds apparently is the asking wound um and the receiving wound you know like you haven't got the capacity to receive so when i was like well asking that doesn't sound traumatic i haven't really got any traumas you know if i said to you have you got any asking traumas you'd be like no <laughs> like not really i don't know it's, Do you it think is you've got... so interesting that now you you are talking about that and i'm having a fucking insight really what about asking for money and i was just like of course yeah because when i was a, a child a young girl i was so fucking afraid of asking my father money to my father oh really okay And this is so amazing, Alexia. You cannot imagine. Because, because yes, there is there is a, a part of me that, that feels uncomfortable when I'm asking for money, when I place, display the numbers of my programs yeah. or my offers, whatever. There's a part of me that feels uncomfortable while doing that. Yeah, yeah. And now that you were you were talking about that, I was just like. The, the image just came to my mind. It's like, oh my God, I was seeing myself as a little girl being really, really afraid of asking for money to my father. Yeah. The afraid, afraid that he would say no. Yeah. Well, which, like, uh... which, which happened a lot of times. Because so yeah, he... how many times do you think he would have said no? He said no because he said no. No, but how many, like, when you think about how many times you would have asked and how many times he said no, 100 times, a 1,000 times throughout your childhood? Like, how many of those experiences? Perhaps, I don't know, maybe 10 to 15? It's hard to know, though, right? But yeah, like, when it's you, hard to know. No, I know, but I when I work with people, I tune into that. And so I tune into how many experiences like that are stacked on that wound that have contributed that are on that theme and the numbers are mind-blowing like so i check in for how many experiences in your current life how many experiences in utero how many experiences in your past lives and from your ancestral lives that you've inherited through the family line that you're carrying so those memories are going to be within yourselves so you know when you think about the holocaust and all things like that, that that's within us we're carrying memories of that from anyone that have experienced that and when I look at the numbers that are stacked up around these wounds, it's just insane. So for me asking, I didn't really have, my dad wasn't there to ask money because we divorced when I was four. So I didn't have that asking. So for me, when I tuned into that, I was like, well, and I only had six experiences around that. But I suspect if I tuned into you, I guess there'd be loads. But I've got 25,000 experiences in my past life on asking that was traumatic and difficult or emotionally painful. And for my ancestors, I had 30,000 experiences. And when I sat down to clear this one on my own, I was like, well, this is going to be an easy one because I've only got six experiences. Like, I'm not really going to shed a tear on this one. Because obviously, when you're clearing traumas, it can be a bit messy, a bit emotional, a bit crying. You know, old okay. stuff comes up and it can be a bit exhausting in that sense. But once it's done, you feel much well I feel much better for it and feel lighter and yeah like I need to go to bed early and have a good night's sleep but I feel much better for having kind of purged the toxicity of that emotion and I sat down to the asking one and I cried for 45 minutes while I was clearing it and I was like what the fuck why the hell are you crying you've only got six experiences here 
but it's all those ones in my past lives and ancestral lives that were coming out the pain the memories of all those times I asked and it blew up in my face for whatever reason and we're carrying I mean we don't really think about that that much no. but when you put all that together you know I had one client that she said can you test whether I've got any traumas from being on another planet and I was like okay <laughs> I can do that she said I've been taken to other planet planets and tested on I was like okay so I've tested so now whenever I test I also test for traumas in other realms planets and dimensions and since I've been doing that it's insane how many traumas happen in other realms like <laughs> it blows my mind when I get the numbers in no yeah no I know it's just crazy so um yeah anyway it's all so interesting and so I'm, today I'm thinking so I'm, I'm all on a trauma thing now I'm just like trauma's where it's at clear your traumas <laughs> I'm constantly clearing my traumas and just getting rid of the stuff. And it's really since I've been clearing my traumas hmm. that I've really noticed a massive leap in, in what I'm doing and my work and my not giving a shitness in my um, asking, like, yeah, clear that asking room. Now I'm like, yeah, no, that's how much my thing is. And I don't bat an eyelid. I, okay, the price needs to be this much. Before I've been like, mm, that's a lot of money. <laughs> you know whereas now I'm like no that's the price I know my worth and that's that's it and I think the game changer for me has been getting rid of the traumas um because it's just taken things to another level which has just been so interesting especially when I think about the fact that a lot of this isn't even my shit it's my ancestors shit or my past lives you know and all my time whole... in utero like my time in utero there was some stuff that I was clearing using my the head trash method and I was like, why isn't this stuff shifting? You know, earlier you were saying you're doing that flip-flopping, that in, out, do, do, do. And I was noticing that a lot with my being visible. So I've got podcasts and I do Facebook live streams. And I, I, I'm not like afraid of being visible, but I noticed I was I was either really, really visible and out there. And then I was like hiding. No, 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 no. And I, got, I wasn't kind of really all in with it, you know? And I was like, what is that about? And it felt really tied into like, a sense of safety and financial security which is kind of like well this why is that connected what has visibility got to do with financial like they're not connected really when you think about it you know you can have a a lot of money earn a lot of money without being visible you don't have to be visible to earn money that doesn't seem the natural you know an obvious link there and then I was like, I bet there's a trauma here. This is the beginning of my trauma journey. So I was like, mm, okay. So I thought, okay, maybe there's a trauma behind all this. So I decided to clear the trauma. And then I spent about half an hour crying. And I was like, well, what the fuck was that? So I decided to tune in at what it was. And I was like, was I under five? Yes, under three. And I was like, oh, fuck, I bet I was in utero. I bet I was, bet I was in my mum's tummy. And it was like, yes, I was. And immediately I knew what it was. And it happened in the, my second trimester and my mother, because I was born in the seventies back then you, there wasn't, I mean, not that we have equal rights at all now, but there was much less of it back then. She was the main bread earner, breadwinner. My dad was doing PhD. So she was earning all the money and she couldn't tell her boss that she was pregnant because she thought she would lose her money, her job. So she had to play small, be small, be invisible because that would mean she'd keep the money. And suddenly all of my shit was right there in what she would have been struggling with while I was starting to show in the second trimester. And I was like, fucking hell. Oh my God. And suddenly all that stuff collapsed. I mean, I cleared that trauma because it was her stuff all in this one situation. And I was like, incredible. Geez, it's nuts, isn't it? How this kind of stuff that, you know, I would have, I would have never have got there on my own if I'd not kind of done the work, the clearance, and then asked and, you know, got the answers. And then it just made so much sense. And once I had the thing that was behind it and went, oh, that's why I'm, right. Suddenly that helps to collapse it too, because you're like, well, this is ridiculous because I'm not in this situation and that's her story, not my story and blah, blah, blah. And so, yeah, all that trauma stuff, you think about what life your mum was living when she was carrying you and there's going to be a ton of clues in there in terms of what you're struggling with today you it's know? funny because i was uh when i arrived home uh two hours ago i was talking with my son about 
exactly that. I was just sharing with him that I I, I wish that my mother was uh, uh, was still alive because I would I want to ask I would like to ask her some some questions, you know. Yeah. But I'm not able to to know now because I wanted to know what was when I was in her uterus. What kind of life did, did she had? What kind of challenges did she had? How was my birth? Yeah. If she gave me uh, breastfeeding or not? Because yeah. all, all the, those um, all those micro experience that she had, I know they yeah. had an impact on me. Yeah. And, sure. and and they have become familiar. They have become who I am. But I know that this is not who I am. This is a product of my past but who i am right now it's not who i am really this is just like yeah a product a result of memories action yeah yeah yeah. so much so much that has that uh, that happened uh, in the past yeah and i wanted my mom my mom to be alive to to ask her these questions yeah no, I know. I say I'm saying here. I I don't have my mum anymore to ask. But when, she, but when she died, I wasn't in self development yet. Yeah, same here. <laughs> so yeah, I've got no chance to ask. I asked my dad, and he's useless on that level. Doesn't he? Yeah. Doesn't have a clue what the birth is like. He can't even tell me whether it's a vaginal birth or a C-section. I'm just like, oh my god. <laughs> I did. I did. I did. I did. I did start asking my father because we we got closer the last. Did you? Two to three years, uh, something shifted within me, yeah. and I started seeing, seeing, really seeing him for the many years. Yeah. Like, oh my God, I, I I love so much my father. And yeah, like, it's like I could see that whatever he is and whatever his reactions are, they were never about me. They are yeah. about him, and I was yeah. completely personalizing the his actions, like. He doesn't like me. He doesn't want me near him. And blah 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 blah. And I was just like, "Fuck! This is not. This is me creating a story." <laughs> so yeah. I, got, I got I got closer to him, and then I start asking him about his past. How was his past? Because he was in a um, in a war in Africa. I asked him asked him oh, how was the war, and I he told me like this fascinating stuff. Then I was just like. Oh my God, he, well, has been, he has been through all of this and he has become this man. Yeah, yeah. Amazing. And it's great that you've got to that place that you can kind of see him for who he is. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just like, Father, can you tell me, how, how was that? How, how was uh, being in, in, in the war? How was when you start, why did you decide to, why did you decide to become a police officer? Because he was a police officer police officer for all his life yeah he has done the same thing his entire life so his devotion yeah. Yeah. his devotion to something that he's, he likes is there so why the fuck i cannot do the same why the fuck do i self-abandon myself when i'm doing yeah, 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 yeah. When, I, when i didn't have that example at home he didn't yeah. abandon himself no no that was not the kind of example that i had at home yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is totally on me. I'm. <laughs> yeah, this one's mine. <laughs> this is mine. This is mine. Yeah, no, it's good to know which stuff is yours and which stuff isn't. But even when it's not yours, it can still be stuff that you struggle with. Um, and that, I don't know, it makes it so interesting why we wrestle with what we wrestle with and where it comes from. Yeah. Today, this morning, when I woke up, I went to, to, to the airport and I was working and suddenly I felt this urge to go to a mountain or to be in a, in a cabin, in a, how do you say, shock, shack, shock? Like a chalet. Yeah, whatever. A cabin. Um, a chalet. Yeah, a chalet. Exactly. I want to be alone in the mountain, just away from everything I, I i need this time from for me i don't know why but i'm feeling this urge to be in 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 a place like this and then a colleague of mine we we crossed each other's path and i started talking with her and she said oh, this this weekend is going we are having a, 
a Temescal ceremony. Have you done a Temescal ceremony? Uh, no, but I really like to actually. You did it. You did it. No, I haven't, but I'd like to. And I never did it. Be I, I have never did it before. And I was like, oh, I knew that the information would come. That is what I. That is the, what I. What I. What I'm going to do. So next Friday, yes, next Friday, I'm going to do my first Temescal ceremony purification. Oh. So I have no idea how it is, how it's going to be like. It's something new. It's myself. Yeah. It's myself again, jumping into the unknown, riding a new edge. So I cannot wait to do it. And, that and, sounds and, cool. And, and, and observe what, 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 it, what will be coming, what be surfacing from that, from that session. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. That's going to be so, um, well, there's so much to come out of that, that I don't know, like learn so much that it just, yeah, who knows which way that's going to go. <laughs> so cool. Alexia, this was a lovely conversation. I, I really enjoyed it too, Dalida. Me too. So glad that you felt the call and you sent me that message. I was just like, yes, let's have a, this, this moment in time together. We never spoke before and it was lovely to meet you. Virtually. Likewise. Yeah, probably, I yeah. I love because I had no idea of, of, about, about your uh, body of work. Uh, now yeah. I know that I, I can mention that on, on the podcast as well because that probably will resonate in so many women. Yeah, and you, might, and you might have some clients from there. Uh, yeah, so cool. well, thank you. It's been lovely. I've really enjoyed it. Yeah, me too. And good luck with your in France. I know. Business, whatever you are doing. And yeah. Let, let's keep in touch. Let's keep in touch. Let's please. Yeah. Do. Thank you so much. You have a lovely week. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye.